There's a viral video that's been going around and it involves salsa. Daily Dose of Internet has shown it twice. Medi from Electroboom has apparently also reacted to it somewhere. At least that's what this comment says. And everybody involved seems to think that this Ay, pero por mucho, ¿por qué hacen este? was caused by electricity. Daily Dose even said the salsa itself was producing said electricity. Something tells me this is not entirely true. So today, I'll basically be making a bunch of salsa and seeing if I can replicate the effect. Also, there's a slim, slim chance that this was actually an attempted at murder caught on camera. More on that later. Naturally, the first step of any adventure involving salsa is preparing the salsa. Could I have simply bought salsa and called it good? Maybe, but then I'm sure somebody would find a reason to complain. And besides, homemade is almost always better anyway. I'm going with a recipe that my dad's been making for decades. And although it's not salsa verde like the clip, I think it'll do just fine. The only real difference is the presence of tomato in addition to the typical green tomatillos. I'll throw the recipe in the video description in case anybody wants to make some. It's honestly really good. Alright, let's get the basic nonsense out of the way. No, the salsa was not producing its own electricity. Sure, if you stick two electrodes in the bowl of salsa, you'll measure a tiny voltage. But if you've ever played with the lemon or potato battery, you'll know that the amount of power here is pretty much negligible. Batteries require reactive chemicals in specific arrangements to create meaningful power. And if something is meant to be ingested, chances are it probably doesn't meet all those criteria. One explanation I've seen a concerning number of times is the idea that the salsa was microwaved first, and that somehow supercharged it with enough energy to spark when it was stirred. Now, can food spark and emit plasma in the microwave? Rarely. It has been shown with grapes, but the effect stops as soon as the microwave is turned off. The electromagnetic field that heats your food and causes the plasma switches polarity billions of times per second, so electricity isn't really capable of building up. This should be kind of obvious even without the sciencey explanation, since we've all stirred food that just came out of a microwave, and I'm pretty sure none of us have ever been sparked or shocked by it. But just for giggles, let's assume our salsa somehow found a way to build up a substantial electric charge. What happens then? Well, I've got a cheap welder that can crank out over 100 amps, so let's see what that does. Pretty disappointing, right? Salsa is fairly conductive, so even when an electric potential is present, it just invisibly short circuits through the salty liquid. The only noticeable effect seems to be the salsa boiling and being electrolyzed into hydrogen and oxygen. We can force it to spark by touching both ends of the welder together, but those sparks look absolutely nothing like the ones in the video. So what if we use an even higher voltage? Does that fix things? Well, this 2000 volt microwave transformer does produce sparks on the salsa surface, but it would also kill you if you held the spoon. And again, the effect looks nothing like the viral video. With electricity, the sparks can only occur on the surface where the metal spoon is making contact. In the viral clip though, the spoon is usually submerged, which would cause a short circuit and the sparks kinda occur all over the place. Plus, there was no angry electrical buzzing noise. So at this point, I feel pretty confident saying the effect had nothing to do with electricity. If it wasn't electricity though, what caused the salsa to become a dazzling light show? A lot of commenters think the culprit was sodium, which is a soft, metallic element that ignites in contact with water, as well as many other materials. When it's added to salsa though, it mostly just fizzes on the surface and burns away slowly. It's vaguely similar to the video at some points, but it's still clearly different. It's also way more erratic when stirred, and it kind of likes to pop, spark, and eject burning salsa in random directions. Plus, it fills the air with a choking sodium hydroxide smoke, hence why I'm wearing the respirator. Think I'm being dramatic? Sodium compounds color fire yellow. Here's a torch outside, and here it is where I was burning sodium. The fumes aren't poisonous, but they are irritating when inhaled. And in the video clip, I don't hear anyone coughing. Based on all this, I'm going to have to conclude that sodium wasn't our mystery salsa ingredient. Personally, when I saw the clip, I thought of phosphine. This gas is basically the phosphorus equivalent of ammonia, at least on a molecular level. And as you just saw, it spontaneously ignites on contact with air. Most importantly though, it can be easily made by mixing water or acid with a metal phosphide. 
a fact that actually has some seriously dark implications for our viral video. You see, in some countries, phosphides like aluminum phosphide are sold as a type of pest control poison. And unfortunately, they have been used to take human lives. So was this just a hoax filmed for views? Or an attempted murder carried out by someone who didn't know their poison would self-ignite? Let's find out. Unfortunately, I couldn't get my hands on commercial aluminum phosphide tablets, so I had to whip up a batch of my own. Thankfully, this is relatively easy if you have access to red phosphorus and powdered aluminum. The two elements are simply mixed together, added to a test tube, and blowtorch until ignition occurs. I did this outside because a portion of the phosphorus likes to burn off and produce a cloud of corrosive smoke. Alright, place your bets. Will this finally give our salsa the kick we're looking for? Well, the slightly acidic salsa is producing a little phosphine, but the microscopic bubbles apparently aren't big enough to catch fire. Let's add a bit of hydrochloric acid. Maybe that'll kick things off. Wow, I had to light it off with a torch. That's actually kind of surprising. But also not. Despite phosphine being capable of self-ignition, its auto-ignition temperature is still slightly above room temperature. Consequently, its pyrophoric properties don't always manifest themselves, which kind of explains why it can be used for fumigation and pest control in low concentrations. Could the viral video have occurred somewhere hot enough to ignite the phosphine? Sure. But I also had to add a strong acid in order to actually get a meaningful amount of gas. So thankfully, it's looking like this probably was not an attempted murder. The video was still a big hoax though, and I have one last contender that just might be able to replicate it. This is silane. It's a pyrophoric gas like phosphine, but it auto-ignites below room temperature, and it's way less toxic. So if anything is going to light up our salsa, it's going to be this stuff. And bonus, it's actually super easy to make. All you need is some sand and magnesium metal. Like before, these ingredients are thoroughly mixed and torched in a test tube until they ignite, which produces a crumbly mass of magnesium silicide and magnesium oxide. Just make sure you do your torching away from anything flammable. Burning magnesium can get a bit exciting sometimes, and you don't want to start a runaway metal fire by placing your extra magnesium mixture nearby. Ask me how I know. Anyway, adding the prepared magnesium silicide to the salsa by itself didn't really seem to do much. This is pretty much expected, magnesium silicide isn't exceptionally sensitive. So let's stir it in and add a healthy splash of hydrochloric acid. This is definitely the right direction, but the effect is a bit too crackly. After letting the salsa sit though, the bubbles do begin to merge and grow under the surface. So with a bit of stirring, Ignoring the hideous appearance of my overflowing, off-colored salsa, this result is spot on. The timing, the flashes, everything seems to match. You can even see little smoke rings from the larger silane bubbles, exactly like the viral video. I really couldn't have asked for a better replication, and I think we can finally put this story to rest. Was the salsa producing electricity, microwaved or otherwise? No, I'm pretty sure most of us knew that. Was electricity used to fake it? Definitely not. Electric sparks were hard to get, potentially lethal, and looked completely wrong. Was it an attempted poisoning with aluminum phosphide? Probably not. Most likely, it was just an old chemistry trick involving acid, sand, and a bit of magnesium. I hope you've all enjoyed this little side quest. It was a lot of fun taking a break from the longer videos I've been working on to do some good old-fashioned myth-busting. That being said, be sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss out on those other videos which include replicating the Coca-Cola secret formula and deploying a 360 camera probe in front of a tornado. As usual, a big thanks goes out to all the dedicated Lab Coats channel members and Patreon supporters. Without them, I wouldn't be able to afford a lot of these videos. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Lab Coats, out.